welcome back to today's build. I'll be your guide to this wonderful game we all love. Let's get started. Today's deck is nuts. His name is Chatterfang Squirrel General, and this is 15 Squirrels and a Dream. Stick around in the end to learn more about a giveaway. Chatterfang is a 3-3 squirrel that doubles up the numbers of tokens we make, with the bonus tokens being squirrels. However, Chatterfang has two other abilities that you shouldn't forget about. One that lets us sacrifice squirrels to either buff or remove a creature, and another, Forest Walk, that makes them harder to block. The second ability spells tokens, but the other two abilities just scream Voltron. So what does this mean? Well, like Wilson, who is also a green-black deck that likes sacrificing tokens, it means that we have some hefty cuts to make, but this deck's composition is more complementary to Wilson's. This time, we're leaning more towards tokens than Voltron, but even though we'll build it like a token deck, we'll be piloting it like a Voltron deck. With an unblockable Chatterfang on the attack against the same opponent each turn, and our tokens set to swarm the other two players, the critical mass that we need our tokens to break before winning shrinks, and as an alpha strike, we can sacrifice any tokens that get blocked to buff Chatterfang. First, we'll want cheap, efficient token makers. Since Chatterfang doesn't care what kind of tokens they are, this can trigger off of treasures, clues, food, armies, and more. Next, we'll want ways to pump up our team. Whether it's growing Chatterfang to sneak in a commander damage kill using the squirrels as fuel, or an overrun effect to make our squirrels storm the board, there's no way around the fact that we need ways to grow our power. Squirrel Nest, Draykeeper, and Shatter of the Squirrel are really inefficient. Compared to the other token makers we have, 5 mana for 2 tokens, 3 mana for 1 token, or even 3 mana for 2 tokens in all, these came in dead last when I ranked all the token makers in the deck, and the timing of the nest makes it clunky if we want to turn 3 Chatterfang. Likewise, Shitter Spitter, Tireless Provisioner, and Scoot Swarm are all really slow and clumsy in the face of a turn 3 Chatterfang. The best token makers in the deck all come down turn 4, and we're never going to choose these over those. This isn't a landfall deck. Tireless Provisioner is very incidental. Zulaport Cutthroat, Blood Artist, and Poison Tip Archer are getting cut again. I promise I don't have anything personal against these cards, they're just not what we want to be doing. They don't make any tokens, don't buff Chatterfang, and we have a dozen better cards to play, like that new Mirkwood Bats, for example. Squirrel Mob doesn't make tokens, it's really just big. But it doesn't have evasion. It's just big, dumb, and green, and Chatterfang is a brilliant tactician. They don't exactly mesh. We'll pass. Avenger of Zendikar and Circle of Dreams Druid are both symptoms of the same problem. Mana. I, man I actually managed to keep my mana curve down to 5 with this deck. Because of how tightly focused we are on making tokens, we don't have a lot of time to ramp, so even though the Avenger is a big payoff, it's too steep a cost to stay in. And likewise, we don't really need the mana from the Druid. She wouldn't be able to tap for mana until turn 5 at best, and the back half of the game isn't exactly when we need to be ramping. For the same reasons, we're also cutting Cultivate, Rampant Growth, and Kadama's Reach. These ramp cards are some of the most reliable in the format, there's a reason these are staples, but any ramp this deck does use needs to come in the form of treasures, because Chatterfang will see those and give us squirrels alongside them. As a last note, I'm also cutting the Scurry Oak Denizen combo. Together, they make infinite squirrels, which is useful, but neither of these cards would make the deck by themselves. Most of our creatures are 1 1s, so Scurry Oak isn't getting a lot of counters naturally, and the Denizen alone occupies an important slot at 4 mana, where a lot of our best token makers are at when we want them to come down right after Chatterfang and have the most impact. As a combo, for all practical purposes, the Oak has to come down before the Denizen, and is even harder to pull off if we don't draw them in that sequence. The earliest we can get this combo online is turn 5 if we never played Chatterfang, and even then it doesn't win us the game, it just makes us the obvious threat just in time for turn 6 when players like to wipe boards. It's slow, clunky, and I'm not happy playing either of them on their own. It's thematic, but this combo does not belong here. So what's our timeline? Turn 1 we'll play a Wild Growth, Utopia Sprawl, or a Soul Ring to put some mana down. We can also play Gilded Goose, Nested Shambler, or Shambling Gas to set up tokens for future turns. Turn 2 we have Gallagreeters, Jadar, and Bitter Blossom to push up tokens over the course of the game. We can also play Squirrel Sovereign, Sylvan Anthem, or Prosperous Innkeeper to give our tokens a boost later on. Turn 3 we'll play Chatterfang and begin our assault. Turn 4 we can play Pest Infestation, Crack Open, or Stew the Conies to slow our opponents down while pushing out tokens. We can also play Fertile Imagination, Beacon of Creation, and Spontaneous Generation this turn. We're also playing Grim Hireling, Mirkwood Bats, and Windswift Slice in these slots for treasures, damage, and removal alongside token generation. Turns 5 and beyond, with tokens in play, we can use Second Harvest, Parallel Evolution, or Sapperling Symbiosis to multiply our board's forces. 
we can dump out even more tokens with Deep Forest Hermit, Zat's Will, and Deranged Hermit to push us into a winning position. One trick I want to give special attention to is the Galadrim Ambush. We'll make sure that we go to combat and deal our combat damage first. Then, after damage, but before combat ends, we'll cast this and double our board. Or, if someone ends up attacking us with even more creatures somehow, we can obviously use this as the text probably intends. With our forces amassed, we can use any one of a dozen different overrun effects, but the best, most efficient ones for this deck are Overwhelming Stampede, Triumph of the Hordes, and the original Overrun. We've also replaced that combo from earlier with Pitiless Plunderer. With either Bastion of Remembrance or Mirkwood Bats out, these go infinite with our commander to win the game on the spot, and best of all, they're all good even when they're not comboing off to win. This is how you build a combo. This deck wants you to build with token makers, but play like a Voltron deck, dividing your forces to conquer on multiple fronts. But doing so makes us especially vulnerable to being board wiped, even more so than before, since we're committing so much to the board. And as long as green's only real answer to this is heroic intervention, that will always be our biggest weakness. But the rate at which we make tokens, as well as the presence of combos as an alternate win, makes it easy enough to bounce back after a wipe. That, plus its ability to interact with our opponent's board while making tokens, make for the deck's biggest strengths, befitting that of the Squirrel Folk's greatest military commander. This is a very solid 8. Special thanks to all my patrons on Patreon. When I started this channel, I wanted to provide insight into deck building decisions with my videos. In practice, what often happens is I talk for 30 minutes about every little nuance of a deck, which is longer than I'm comfortable with posting to YouTube, so a lot of that discussion gets cut for time. Here, patrons can find extended discussions on their favorite decks, in-depth guides on complex game actions, request priority deck techs, and more. So if you enjoy this content, consider becoming a patron today. One of the things my patrons have made possible is a special series of deck decks that I'm really excited to show off to you guys. When I finally get them all uploaded, I'll be giving away a special collection of altars and tokens that I've made, corresponding to each deck on the channel. For example, for the Merkle Lord of Bones deck, the prize is a set of double-faced altars of the most prominent cards in the deck, whose backsides are set in the constellation frame with updated text to show that they're acting as enchantments now. For every thousand views on each video, I'll increase the prize pool for that deck. All you have to do to be eligible to win is be subscribed to the channel. If you like this video, the next decks I'll be looking at can be found here, in no particular order, so if you see something you like, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss them, and check out the playlist in the top left for more. Thanks for watching!